they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm hooking them down. We turn the spots in the frowns. Can't hop out, then we clearing the crowd. What's up, y'all? Sugar Brianna Imani, and you're tuned in to another Talk of the Town interview. And who do we have in the building today? What's good? What's good? It's your boy Jab. You feel me? Shout out Talk of the Town. I, I respect y'all for, for fucking with a nigga. You feel me? Well, thank you for coming. We have so much to talk about. Um, first of all, happy Black History Month. Um, <laughs> happy Black History Month. We're celebrating also the 50 years of hip hop. It's a lot of things going on right now. So very excited to dive into that and learn more about you. So to do a little icebreaker, we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to hit you with some hip hop trivia oh, and shit. see if you could guess um, the answers to the questions that I got for you. You ready? Yeah, I think I think I'm good on that. All right, I'm gonna go easy on you. All right, who are the O three Bonnie and Clyde? O three Bonnie and Clyde. You talking about Jay Z and Beyonce? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> shout out to Beyonce. First of all, we waiting for you know what? I won't get into it, but since we waiting for the visuals. All right. <laughs> um, who once walked with God and went through the wire? Oh, that's my boy Kanye. Mm -hmm. right. Dwayne Michael Carter is better known as. Jay-Z. No. Dwayne Mike. Oh, you talking about um my fault. Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. All right. All right. You, you almost slipped. Yeah, yeah you almost slipped. But I, you caught yourself. You caught yourself. <laughs> Lauren Hill was a member of which 1994 band? The Fugees. Yes. The Fugees. Shout out to them. Right. Which album by 50 Cent just celebrated its 20th anniversary? That's Get Rich or Die Try and Shout out my Queens niggas. You feel me? I fuck with 50. Uh-huh. And how many times did it go platinum? This is a little bonus question for that question. Because that's a tough right, one. I'm going to say five. You close. It was eight. Damn. Nah, I was underestimated. <laughs> <laughs> Who is, um, who's renowned as the longest charting female rapper on the Billboard Hot 100? Wouldn't that be Nicki? Absolutely. Uh, you already know Nicki the Ninja, Nicki <laughs> Harajuku Barbie. Like, okay. Um, this hip hop collective was formed in Harlem in 2005 and is an acronym for when you want to get something done as fast as you can. Want me to repeat the question? Yeah, yeah. This hip hop collective was formed in Harlem in 2005 and is an acronym. For getting something done as fast as you can. Fast as you can. In 2005. Um, I fuck with Dipset, so I want to say Dipset, but I feel like that acronym. The key don't make is, yup, the name is also an acronym, not their acronym. But something that we use in everyday talk. G give me like a little hint. That is your hint. Getting something done as soon as you can. Harlem. Oh, ASAP. ASAP. ASAP okay. Mob. Yes. That absolutely. was 2005? Yeah, they were founded in 2005. Shit. <laughs> and this Brooklyn native, this is your last question. Mm. This Brooklyn native is a founding member of Pro Era and a star in 50 Cent Show Power Book 3. Oh, that's my boy Joey Better. Yeah, okay. You did good. I don't know if you if you just real cultured or if I went easy on you. Nah, it was kind so, of easy. Okay, all right. Maybe I went easy on you. This this the test run. We just tried it out. So the next person won't be so lucky. Um, so let's get into you though. Talk to us about like where you're from. I know you're from Brooklyn. We rap Brooklyn all day. What part of Brooklyn are you from? Uh, I'm from Flatbush, East Flatbush to be specific. Shout out the 40s, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Shout out the 90s too. I'll be over there a lot. So, shit like that. Okay. And now, when did you start getting into music? Music? Uh, that, that played a part in my life since, like, a kid. I don't okay. think it was ever, like, a choice of, like, all right, I'm going to start making music. Mm -hmm. It was just, like, that was my way to, like, vent. And my okay. way to, like, get my feelings out and shit like that. Okay, so you weren't always doing it with, like, the intention of, like, making music publicly. It was, like, nah, an outlet. I'm the type of person, I was making music, and no one would know I was making music. Mm -hmm. I was writing that shit for myself. Okay, so I know that you, I think the first video that you dropped, at least from your YouTube channel right mm -hmm. now, was, like, six years ago. Yeah. Was that the first time you, like, started nah. dropping your music publicly? So nah. it's more, okay, I felt like it might have been more music in the stash. Yeah. Were you dropping music on SoundCloud, too? Yeah. Or Yes, you were. Okay, okay, okay. So what was the very first song that you decided to drop publicly? Wow. So the first song publicly that mm -hmm. I ever was on, 
that was on SoundCloud was actually with my son Kev that's right here. Mm-hmm. It's a song called For My Niggas. Mm. We ended up shooting a vid for it. We took it down off YouTube, though. It was amateur and shit. You feel me? Why? Why? Nah, it was the it was the very very beginning. So it was like get your homie up the block to shoot the video. You feel uh huh. Looking back at it, you feel me? We could have done better, but we was of we was course. Burning, you feel me? But you know what? I feel like there's always two sides of that. Cause sometimes mm. people like keep their stuff up. So that they can like track the progress, like yeah, you see, this is where we really came nah, from. Cause like you could see Fabi's old videos, and you be I feel like, like, that's that's cool when you finally get there. I feel mm, like when you still running, people don't want to see you struggling. Like they look at it like, nigga, you fucked up. You feel mm, me? So okay, like, that's interesting. You gotta show I see what them, you mean but, by but that. Look good. Okay, so would you re-upload it once you get on? If they want it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so what does like the thought process behind like? Being someone that's keeping your music to yourself to deciding to release that publicly, what are like the types of things that go through your mind when making that decision? It was it was a lot of um friends, you feel me? Like around that time is when I started this group called Sabotage. That's mm-hmm. the brand I got on right now. Mm-hmm. Shout out we to gonna, We gonna get into it. So it's like I, I, I always believed in myself, but I did I I did rapping just like I said for myself. It right. was a way to vent. But once people found out like I had the talent. And they, they telling me, like, yo, bro, you going crazy. Why this shit not out? Mm-hmm. That's when I finally started feeling like, nah, like, people fuck with this shit. Let, mm-hmm. me, let me test the water. So how did you feel when you start first started putting your music out? Because I know sometimes it's hard to, like, gain that traction right away. Like, how, what was your, what was your initial thoughts? Uh, I feel like I was really hyped. I just mm-hmm. wanted people to really, like, care what I had. Mm-hmm. A lot of people didn't really know, know like, I was rapping. They ain't really understand that type of shit because me on a day to day basis, I'm mad chill. Mm-hmm. I'm mad all that. You seem so very like, like laid back, reserved. When a nigga start rapping, they like, damn, he really could go off. So it's like. And you know what? Not only do you go off, but like you're very vulnerable in your music. Like I feel yeah. like you put a lot of your life story into into the music that you make, which I think also makes it like very good to listen to because I feel yeah. like it's connectable and relatable for a lot of people. Yeah. So I think that that level of vulnerability is also should go noticed because you spin, but you also like you could tell that it's something that you're doing because you genuinely have a passion for it and you just get in your I guess you like getting your feelings out. Yeah, my thoughts out. Yeah, getting your thoughts out. So when you think about your progress from making music on your own and to now, what are three words that you would use to describe like your progress as an artist? Three three words. Mm Mm-hmm. I leveled up. You feel me? Ooh. Okay. Leveled up in what ways? I feel like everything, you feel me, in terms of content. I found ways to, like, keep myself more, like, active in the music. Mm -hmm. It was, like, the younger jab, it was, like, I did music, but I feel like I did a lot of other shit that took up a lot of my time. I feel like now I know how to, like, space my time around the music, so I get more of a better outcome from that shit now. Okay, and how would you say, like, the support is? I know you said that your friends were, like, championing you to, like, start putting your music out there. How is your support system? That that was when you're younger, you feel me? When you get older, the support system is really yourself, you feel me? Like, mm. real shit. It's like, of course you got people that's with you every day, but at the end of the day, you got to want this for yourself. Of like, course. When you hit a certain age, I feel like no one around you going to want something for you when it don't got nothing to do with them, if you get what I mean. Hmm. So you, you think everybody operates with another motive? Yeah. <laughs> really? So you don't feel like you have like people that are genuinely like in your corner who really like want you to win without? Of, of course, but yeah, it, it, it's not many of that. Um. Okay. So, how would you describe your sound? Like, if you had to pinpoint what your sound is, what would it be? You know what's crazy? What? I don't know. Like when I think about my sound, like. It's never a specific like thing about it. Mm-hmm. Like today, a nigga, a nigga at my job was telling me like, "Yo, bro, I listen to your tape, and like you sound like Wabi and Corday." And I'm like, "Yo, bro, I'm I weird. Never that, yeah, bro. I never like, that shit. I never so thought I feel that like either. when it come to like your sound, like I don't know that shit. Like yeah. I feel like the people could tell me, but for me, it's just me. You feel me? I'm just, I sound like myself. That's interesting. Um, I don't have anybody on the top of my mind that I would compare you to. Mm. But I think it's very raw and real. Um, And I think it's very different than what is, like, blowing up right now. Mm -hmm. Specifically, you know, right now, drill is, like, very big, especially in New York. Um, 
but I think that whatever you're doing, keep doing it because it sounds great. <laughs> um, so now, like I said before, it, we're in a time right now where drill is like such a big thing. You wouldn't identify yourself as a drill artist. Nah. So how is it as well, some... Shout out, shout out the drill artist, though. Yes. I'm not saying that is a shot. Shout out, no, and not, I don't think that anybody would have taken it that way. I mean, everybody can't be a drill artist. So not to say you can't... All right, whatever. Let me keep <laughs> no, going. I get it, I get it, I get <laughs> but um, how is it as an artist who doesn't fit into that drill space trying to make a name for yourself when drill is what's big right now? Uh... I don't, I don't feel like it's as hard as people make it seem. Mm. I feel like people want to hear something new. You feel me? You hear drill every day. Mm -hmm. It's it's going to hit a time where it's like niggas want something different, and you might as well be one of the first niggas with that right. instead of following that wave when it's hot. You feel me? Yeah, because I feel like there's a lot of people who say like their music is overlooked because it's not what like New York is looking for right now or what mm. people are looking for in general because everybody's focused on the drill. But I agree with you to the yeah. point where it's like, but there are people out there who want to hear something new. And yeah. not to say that Drill is going to run its course. But eventually, you know, yeah, people are going to want to hear something else. So I think that, you know, for the artists that are focusing on trying to fit into what is, like, popping right now, I think it's okay to do your little one-two. But, like, don't change nah, your whole it, sound. It, it, it you don't think cool. so? Like, nah. I think... I feel like for you to rap Drill and for you to be a Drill artist, like, that got to be a life, like... I, I don't respect the nigga that's going to come up and know that, like, since that's a hot lane, he going to take that lane and rap all that shit, but he don't really live that life. That I think it depends 40. on what it, what your definition of a drill song is because the city girls hopped on a drill song. Like, and they are not drill but artists. And that's what yeah, I mean by, like, do your... Artists, no, I wouldn't. But that's why I said you could do your little one-two if you want to mm. put a drill song out there just so if you think that's what's going to make you pop... And then you doing the rest of your music the way it was? Cool. But don't change your whole sound. That's what I was saying. Nah, I get it. I just don't get how, like, how, like, people could, could make the drill shit seem like it's, like, you could turn it on and off. Like, niggas mm -hmm. want to hop in that shit. Like, I look at it like that culture is, like, because coming from the streets, you understand, like, what the drill shit is. And, like, if you're not taking that lane... Don't take that lane, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Like, don't try to hop on it for a song or because it's hot right now. That's all I'm trying to say. So how do you feel about the mainstream artists who are hopping on drill songs because yeah, it's hot it's, right it's now? It's corny. It's corny. You think so? So you don't, but, be, you don't be listening to none of them? Nah. <laughs> I listen to mad music. I feel like it's mad music out there besides drill. Yeah. And I don't really listen to that much drill. Okay, that's fair. So what kind of music do you listen to? I listen to a lot of... A lot of rap still, but just niggas that's not really on that type of... Because the thing is with me, I'm older now. So it's like, of course, when I was younger, I was going crazy to the Chief Keefs. You feel me? Shit like that. I'm mm -hmm. a big Herb fan. Mm -hmm. I still listen to Herb to this day. You feel me? But the thing is with me, I like to hear growth in music. You feel me? And with the drill artists, it's like, if you talking about killing niggas on every song, talking about hearing licks and the same type of shit, mm -hmm. me personally, I'm not going to hear that growth in you. But when I listen to a nigga like Herb and he talking about coming from that shit, making it out, and now putting on for his people, mm. it's like, for me, that's motivational. You feel okay, me? so you're not even... Shit, I look at it like, a nigga listen to that, all it's going to want to make you do is spin a block and kill a nigga. Mm -hmm. You listen okay. to some motivational shit, you might make $1,000 today. You never know. So you feel like the content within the drill music is very repetitive. Yeah. Okay, and kind of like stagnant. So that's interesting. That's very interesting because I think that a lot of times, like something that you just said was you listen to it for motivation. Yeah. I think a lot of times a conversation that's had when it comes to hip hop music specifically is the influence that it has on the people that are listening to it. Right. So do you think that like listening to drill music or listening to music that has that kind of concept can, I guess, influence you into like leading down that life? 100%. <laughs> you think so? 100%. Like that's like when you were a kid growing up. I'm listening to Dipset, certain shit. Niggas is talking about hustling, making money. What you think I want to do when I'm hearing that shit? Right. I want to go outside and make some money. Like, make something happen. But so I it's think... it's like, I know we not getting influenced by that shit because we old enough. We could tell. I feel like these young kids that's listening to that shit, they thinking this shit is really real. They thinking these niggas is really walking up the block, shooting a nigga, walking away, and nothing happens after that. So what would you say to the people that are watching this right now who are heavily involved in the drill space listening to that music who may feel like they're leading down a lifestyle that follows along with the music that they listen to. 
Hey, if that's your life, <laughs> do that shit. If it's not your life, don't do that shit. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so who who are you listening to right now? Because you say you listen to the G Herbos, you was listening Fact. to the Chief Keeps. Who else are you listening to in the rap scene? Right now, I listen to my peoples, you feel me? I listen to Keta Pope. Mm-hmm. I listen to my bro Zell. I listen to Tube Sock Cam. I listen to a lot of my peoples, you feel me? Shout out Kid. Mm-hmm. Shout out Just Aura, you feel me? All my peoples. But in terms of like mainstream, I feel like it's it's on and off, you feel me? Mm-hmm. I go back to a lot of old music because it's like nowadays shit that come out, it don't yeah. be hot for too long, you feel me? Does that impact the way that you view the song though, if it's not hot for a long time? Not really, but when I also mean hot for a long time, I mean the song might not have like sustainability. Okay. So it might not be able, it, it don't it's not like feel. timeless. Yeah. Okay. So it's like you hear it one time and it's like I got enough out that song. Mm-hmm. I don't want to run it back. I definitely agree with you. There's very low replay value in a lot of songs <laughs> that are coming out these days. Um, You just mentioned Zell and y'all have a song together that I really like, R.O.D. Word. That was on your Shout latest out, project. Bro. Shout, out, Shout out Zell. Yeah, y'all really bodied that. Yeah. But let's talk about it because Sabotage the label, I don't even need a deal. <laughs> let's really <laughs> get into out, Sabotage. Um, How did that all start so that started in high school with me joby and vj that's before zell was even in that shit that nigga was a hooper and shit you feel me mm. but basically just like i had told you after i dropped the first song i had dropped with um kev mm-hmm. i remember going to school after and everyone was like yo bro like you going crazy like oh the soundcloud and shit to to niggas back then was like a big deal that yeah was almost like getting your shit on like world star because nigga. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. niggas don't know how to do that shit we right. still in school so it was like niggas started hyping this shit and then like my real bros around me which was people like joby and vj they automatically wanted to like get involved in this shit because every day when i'm with them and i'm spitting I'm the type of nigga, if I spit a freestyle, I'm looking at you like, bro, what's next? Like, you got something, bro? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So from there, these niggas just started rapping. And then it was like, we turned around and that's what we was. So what would you call it? Is it like a collective? Because I know y'all got the clothing brand. Y'all got the music. Like, what I, would you I'll say? I'll it? call it like a production label. Okay. Facts. We do a lot of shit. We got clothing. We got, we got artists. You feel me? Mm-hmm. All that. And I noticed that y'all all released your music under the same YouTube. Facts, facts. Um, right, right now it's, it's me and Zell. You feel me? It was somebody else that yeah, that it had... was my bro VJ. But uh-huh. um, shout out, shout out, bro. He's still doing his thing. Six fifty. That's his clothing brand. You feel me? He went solo with it. Okay. So two things. So do you? Shit. No, no, it's all good. Um, do you feel like um, really dropping music on the same YouTube channel hurts or helps when it comes to you personally and your brand? I feel like as of right now, it helps because all right, my thing is I, I got my own shit. I'm dropping my own shit. Mm-hmm. I got my own distribution and all that. But when it comes to like the visuals and shit like that, I try to keep all that together because... I look at it like our YouTube is like our our shit. You feel me? It's like so a portfolio it's like, in yeah, a way. So it's like I think it's way litter to go on a YouTube page and see drops from several artists mm-hmm. than go on a YouTube page and see one. Mm-hmm. So it's like if a nigga don't fuck with me on that page, mm-hmm. then they go to Zell shit, they might fuck with Zell. Do you think that it helps also having a brand that's so versatile? Like Yeah. It, it takes a lot of time. Yeah, I'm sure. It, it, it takes a lot of time. What does the behind the scenes look like? Like, what's what's your role in the whole scenario? I'm doing everything. <laughs> so how? Everything. So how do you break your time up on a day to day with focusing on your music, focusing on your brand, and focusing on your personal life? Uh, I feel like I make my personal life what the music is mm. so any little time i get for myself i'm not using that as personal time i'm just using it to get some new clothes done do a new sweatsuit mm-hmm, do a new mm-hmm. song, hit the stew um while we on the topic of clothes What's did that? you bring merch because i yeah. want a hoodie <laughs> Nah, I ain't gonna lie, we slacking right now. We ain't putting no new shit up on the site. How the fuck you gonna pull up to talk of the town and forget the merch? Nah, That's nah, crazy. Nah, we ain't forget. We just we just in the works right now. So <laughs> no, I, I, I fuck with you, but I, I do want a hoodie. Up. Um, okay, so um 
like I said, you said sabotage, you know, <laughs> what you said, sabotage a label, you don't need to get signed or you don't need a, a deal. Facts. Do you really feel that way or was you just saying that? Nah, that's a fact. Why would I sign why would I sign to someone if I could sign niggas? Agreed. Um, well, understood. Yeah. So you think that that's the case long term? You're not looking to get signed. You always going to do the I, own I thing. I ain't going to lie. It, it depends what you're talking. <laughs> yeah, because I'm if, like. If the, if the terms is like undeniable, then it's like I'm a fool for denying that. Because um, recently, you know, P just signed, um, what's it called? Quality control. Oh, you talking about when, for he, millions. when, he, got, when he got bought out? That's some sellout for a shit. Mil- you think that's sellout shit? Yeah, you gonna Why? sell your brand that's worth billions for thirty million for three hundred mil? I just hate that it was during Black History Month. I think that the he probably made a lot more than he was looking to, and maybe that's why he made that decision. I don't know why he made the decision, but I I asked you because you said unless it's worth it to him, it was probably worth it. In a situation like that, if you get bought out. Nah, <laughs> I said it, there is no situation it. like that. I feel like in the black community specifically, we need like those strong, you feel me? Those strong labels that still there. Like we don't yeah. got like how Master P and all them niggas was lit back in the days. We mm-hmm. don't got shit like that. We mm-hmm. don't got Birdman for this generation. I, w- shit. I will say that I was thinking about that too, and I was thinking kind of about like brands like BT also, mm. where it's like you look at these brands that are for us, Fact. by us, and then they kind of give way. Yeah. To a, a bigger corp. See, <laughs> it's like I don't want to say it, but it's like damn because I think that. P did a lot for the hip hop community, especially now, baby, mm-hmm. city girls, all of them, like Migos. Everybody is like, there's so many big names that came from that. And I think that for it to no longer be solely his, it's kind of disappointing. Mm-hmm. Um, damn, what a time. So you, you, you're not going for that. Nah, I'm you're not going for that shit. at all. Okay, um, so talk to me about your latest project. I know we kind of touched, dibbled and dabbled into it um, a little bit, therapy sessions. Tell me what your creative process was like with coming up with that. Creative process. It, it was a lot of pain in that shit, you feel me? I feel like, yeah, just like you said earlier, I was being very vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And all of it was just coming from, I feel like I had a chip on my shoulder, you feel me? I never dropped a project before that. Before mm-hmm. that, I probably had, like, five singles out. Mm-hmm. So that was really, like, me trying to prove myself, for real, for real. And what did you think about after you did it? Do you feel like after the point the was proven? feedback, proving? you feel me? Like, I feel great. Yeah, I think I it was like, good. Yeah, a lot of people gave me the same, like, thing that you told me, you feel me? Like, yo, you was being vulnerable. I really fuck with that. Mm-hmm. It's better than the shit out right now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I feel like it's good. So you're happy with the reception that you've received so far? Yeah. What's your favorite song on the project? Damn. Uh, nah, I got a few. I got a few. Um, I feel like it's always kind of like asking a parent who their favorite child yeah, is. those are my babies. But <laughs> like, I feel like every parent also has a favorite child. So low key. All right. So the outro, which is Pamela, I dedicated that song to my mother. Yeah. That's so, what I thought you was gonna say. It, it it meant the it meant the most to me because of the what the song what the song was about. Mm-hmm. But in terms of like just lyrical ability and flow wise, I fuck with Forty Story. Okay. I feel like I really was like on some storytelling shit. You mm-hmm. feel me? Mm-hmm. That remind me of like you feel me when Meek Mill had the Rico story and shit like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. It bring me back. You feel right. Me? I'm trying to bring that vibe back. Okay. So. Now, that's interesting because you just recently hopped on Blockwork and facts, you facts. performed, wasn't it Sabotage? Did you? Nah, I what was it that Survival. You, survival, sorry, survival. The, the S's. You, um, you performed Survival. So how do you choose which songs you perform on platforms like that? Because that wasn't one that you named as one of your favorites. Yeah, so what goes crazy, into that decision? Because I remember even putting the project together. I was I was playing some of this shit to my son Zell, and he was actually telling me not to fuck with that shit. You feel me? Real oh, shit. really? Yeah, he like, yo, it's it's all right, bro. You got better shit. Then I remember like I'm sitting down one day. It was probably the final day where I uploaded all the songs to um Distro. Mm-hmm. And in my head, I'm like, nah, this song going into Pamela is really like amazing because I feel like I was starting to be vulnerable yep. on survival. I completely and in agree. Pamela, I was really vulnerable. Mm-hmm. So it like. I, I viewed that as the best way to end the tape. Yeah. But the reason I chose to do that for the block work 
Because surprisingly, a lot of people told me that was their favorite song off the shit. Mm -hmm. I really like that song. I'm not going to lie. I like Pamela, too, because I could tell that that was really coming from a personal, personal place. Mm -hmm. I feel like people like Um, Survival because of the beat. Yes. Survival. No, I'm sorry, but what heavy week was when you was performing and your bitch was in the back like. (laughs) <laughs> but what you were saying was low key like some real shit. But they was, I was like, yeah, I could tell they were locked in. They try, they try to be supportive, but it's hard not to bump like that. Yeah. Even though you talking some real shit, like we say, you know, <laughs> you putting your pain on the track. It really was like, oh, but this shit bumped though. <laughs> um. So okay. So I think that that was very interesting. So now, when it comes to like the stuff, the content within your music, how do you feel when it comes to translating that into like real time, real conversations? Because sometimes it can be very hard to open up mm. um verbally like in conversation as opposed to putting it in a track mm. how does it how do you feel about like people approaching you about the stuff that you talk about in your music uh i don't know if i'm not comfortable with that mm-hmm. <laughs> you feel me mm-hmm. I, i'm not the biggest verbal person mm-hmm. and that's probably why i'm so good at the music because i could just put all of that shit in there right I don't really want people pulling up on me like, yo, bro, why you said that in that shit? Yo, that's how you really feel. You fucked up. You good, bro. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and good. that's why I wanted to ask you because, you know, not everybody wants to talk about it. It's yeah. like I'm putting it out there. That's like we said before. That's your outlet. But it doesn't mean that I want to actually converse about Flex, it. Flex. I, I got you. I got you. I got you. So um, you do have a few different collabs on that project. Yeah. What are your thoughts about collabs overall? How do you choose who you want to collab with and work with? So to be honest, I I did mad collabs before. You feel me? I feel like before me really dropping a lot of my music, that was how a lot of people would hear me. You mm-hmm. feel me? On collabs. Mm-hmm. So with this project, I really wasn't trying to go collab crazy. The mm-hmm. only reason those collabs ended up even going on it was because the songs fit the um the, artist. the basically the the topic of what the project was. Okay. So if those specific songs didn't fit in, it probably would have just got it. On that shit. So you when you me? made the songs with the collabs, it wasn't with the intention of putting it in not, the project initially. Not really. Got you. Not at all. Okay, I got you. I got you. I got you. When, so when I make music, it's more of like um it's it's free thought. Mm. And then after it's like that's when I could pick pick it together and say nah this go with this. I always wonder that sometimes when I'm listening to projects like what was the intention behind this? Like mm. what were the songs written for the purpose of um this album or was it like like you said piecing it together based yeah. on what's unreleased and what flows together? Um cuz SZA right now, oh my girl. <laughs> nah, she her so album crazy. has me in a chokehold, but I'm not even going to lie. There's an unreleased um an unreleased part of her song, the one I guess I got to go. And she really bodied that. She was really talking her shit. And I'm so sad that she didn't include it in her album. So Mm. that's why I'm saying, like, I really wonder, like, what goes through, like, you as an artist, what goes through y'all's minds when it's like, this is what I'm putting in my album versus this is what what I'm not. I feel like a lot of artists probably go through that, though, because I feel like if I let some people hear my unreleased, they'll be like, yo, bro, why you you didn't do this? this? Right. So how do you feel about keeping your unreleased tracks? Like, do you keep them with the intention of one day maybe putting them out or you got something that you know is just going to be in a tuck? It's a couple. It's a couple that might stay in a tuck. I feel like, you know, you feel me when it's really that one and you know when it's like. Nah, I could, I could, I could pass on. Do you know, or you go based on like the feedback that you get from other people too? Nah, I don't just go strongly off the feedback because people change their mind every day. You feel that's me? true. So I, you I, feel it, yeah, for that's yourself. What I feel. Okay, so um, like we kind of talked about already, also like you're, you seem very reserved, not a man of many words. Well, I feel like you're doing a great job though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, conversation, yeah, I, 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 I feel I'm like this conversation good. is flowing. Um, how are you when it comes to performing though? Performing, I feel like I do a great job of performing. You feel me? Okay. I had some good performances. I feel like one of the best performances I had was last year, Rucker's Unity, um, Unity Fest. Mm. That shit was crazy. You feel me? Me and my son Kev killed that shit. It was mad people there showing love, all that. Okay, was they they was singing your song? They was rapping your. They, they was vibing. Cause I always wonder that, like from an artist perspective, like when you're performing and. People don't know, like, what the words are that go with your song. Like, is that motivation for you to, like, keep yeah. going so that they can really start fucking with it? Yeah. Like, how does that make you feel? Okay. so I you, feel like you, 
it, when you when you first start performing, mm-hmm. of course you're gonna go out there. You might feel a little anxious because you're looking at people and you don't know if they fuck with you. Right, yet. right. But when you actually get into it and you moving around and shit, and you see they start fucking with it. That's when you get even hyper. And I you agree. Get energy burst because it's like. Yo, all these people fuck with me. And I think a lot of times the audience also feeds off of the artist's energy too. Mm. And sometimes, like, I've seen performances, like, for upcoming artists where I think that they get in their head about the fact that people don't know the words and, Mm. like, people not really vibing with them at first. And then it kind of, like, brings down their performance. Mm. But it's like, no, keep doing your big one because people are going to be in tune. Like, (laughs) if you believe it for yourself, like, people are going to... Right. So that's... What's your favorite part of performing? My favorite part is interacting with the crowd you feel me okay would you crowd like, surf nah <laughs> <laughs> i don't even fuck with shit like like i'm not really dancing on stage or doing nothing crazy I, i'm i'm just rapping you feel me yeah but, but i'm gonna turn up a little bit <laughs> yeah i didn't think you were gonna say yeah but i just wanted to see what she was gonna say <laughs> um so what's something like in the vein of being like reserved and stuff, um, what's something that you think that is like interesting about you that people don't know or that they wouldn't know? Interesting. Mm-hmm. Damn. Um. <laughs> oh, oh, Dang. I know you got something. Like that people wouldn't know? Yeah, I'm, but if, like, I'm going to give you, like, five seconds if you can't think of something, and it could be stuff, something that people know. I ain't got shit for that. All right, <laughs> what's something that people would know that uh, you people, think people is know, interesting? You feel me? I'm a fly guy, you feel me? Get real fly, you feel me? Smooth nigga, you feel me? You a fly shit. guy. Okay, talk your shit. All right, well, hold on, because Fashion Week is among us mm-hmm. right now, New York Fashion Week specifically. So, Mr. Fly Guy, what are, like, your top, like, fit essentials? We're going to start off with the fit essentials, and mm. then I want to know your favorite brands. Mm. Fit essentials? I feel like you got to have a good hat, you feel me? Either gray, if it's if it's a, if it's a black nasty, you tweaking, you feel me? We don't do Damn, those. Damn, I haven't heard a black nasty in nah, you'll be mad it's, it's long. A like people doing bad out here. <laughs> I haven't heard somebody you say me? that. It's Get so you a gray, long. you feel me? Hit flat bush, you feel me? The Av, it's mad of them shits, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Nice little beanie, you feel me? I feel like the accessories and shit is what really bring out the fit. Right, you can wear a regular fit. I got a regular sweatsuit on, you feel me? But the beanie hard, you feel me? Got that shit on though. Okay, and your favorite brand. Sabotage, we know. Yeah. Um, but let me get a couple more of your favorite brands. A more, uh, damn, I, I don't want to put too much out there. People be, you feel me? Uh-uh, not you <laughs> gatekeeping. <laughs> nah, real shit, though. Um, I fuck with Rude, you feel me? They mm-hmm. got a couple hard pieces. Mm-hmm. It, it really depends, though. I feel like a lot of brands, they too trendy, and it's too much people wearing that shit, so I kind of... I go a little low, slow class with it. You feel okay, me? Okay, I, I hear you. Uniqlo, you feel me? I hear you, Real and there's nothing wrong with that. How important do you think, like, image, brands, like, clothes, all of that is to an artist? With me, personally, I feel like that's my image, so it's important for me. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if you make music like a nigga like J. Cole, like, they don't give a fuck how yeah, you Yeah, you got a little more flexibility. Yeah, yeah. but okay. I'm talking about getting fly in the music, so... They expect the nigga to be flawed. Right, in real life. Um, something I also wanted to ask you about was your freestyling because you, mm. something I think is, in, okay, something that's been happening recently when it comes to like the hip hop scene is there are a lot of freestyles that are happening, but they're not really like freestyles. Yo, I really freestyle. You really like, freestyle. No, I know. I and, I, and I saw um, you and Kev actually did an interview and y'all was doing like Yo. your freestyles and you was yeah, like, yeah, out, I'm shout out Rhode Island. They ducking me right now. I'm supposed to be killing that shit right now. Wait, bro. what? Why? Wow. Nah, they heard they ducking me. It's cool though. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, all right, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> um, but you were, you like, before you even started, you was like, yeah, I'm coming up with this off the dome and then you was just spitting. Right. And I was like, wow, because now it's always like pre-recorded. It's like, you know, it's not really off the top. Um, with the exception of something, because yeah, there are artists nah, that they they doing their thing. World, shout out, shout out Juice, Juice World. You said okay, yeah. Shout like out Juice World, and that. shout out to all the artists that has been on like 
105 mm. doing their thing cuz I know those a lot of those are freestyles too but you really been doing your thing oh, um so how do you feel though as somebody who genuinely naturally freestyles um seeing the already made freestyles like do you feel any kind of way nah, I don't hate I don't hate cuz I feel like as long as the outcome is fire, it's like, mm-hmm. I can't hate on how you got to it. Mm-hmm. But I just view mine as more, like, natural and organic. Mm-hmm. Like, even if I'm here and I slip up while I'm saying it, the next line, I'm going to make, I'm going to go even harder because I know, nah, nigga, I just slipped up. So, right. let me hit him with a punchline. Right. <laughs> so, something that I was also talking about with one of my friends was freestyles don't always have to be off the top of your dome. I don't know, like, that's that was what the conversation was. Does it have to be off the top of your dome, or does it have to be free from the style that you usually do? <laughs> All right, so this, this is my rule for a freestyle. Uh-huh. If you got a song, and it's in the cut, you never use that shit, and you spit a verse from that shit and say it's a freestyle, it's not a freestyle, bro. Mm. <laughs> Dead ass. It's not a freestyle. So it's your unreleased, bro. <laughs> so a freestyle is only what you come up with on the spot. All right. If you don't come up with it on the spot, mm-hmm. you had to write it with the intention of it being your freestyle. And then you memorize okay. that shit. So no I'm repurposing pass song. With that. You feel me? Okay. And but that's if, and if that's it's your song, mm-hmm. don't use a verse from your song and say you freestyling. Mm, let me find out that's what y'all do. Well, I already yeah, that's know that's what y'all do. I can't even say let me find out. I, I I know how that go. So um I'ma challenge you right now. Give me like I don't know, just go until you want to stop. What? It, it's a beat, it's a beat of song? Oh know. damn, you can't do an acapella. Yeah, I really I just put you I put you on the spot, me, O D. The acapella giving me too much old. All right, vibes. what if I'm still, I'm still young again, <laughs> That ass, I need a beat. Damn, I don't got no beat. I don't even think anybody's prepared because I really just yeah. pulled that out of my ass. Nah, that ass, but I spit right now too. It's just like I don't want to come off like an old ass nigga with no beat. Like, <laughs> damn, but they already know the vibes. Like, I just put you on a spot just to see. Like, nah, don't make it sound like I'll, I'll start. Like, I'll beat start I'll beatboxing. Like Let me. <laughs> You might, you might need that beat. Damn. <laughs> all right. All right. It's fine. Maybe we'll catch you at another time. Yeah, um, <laughs> you, 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 y'all can't pull up a beat real quick, son. I don't even think anybody was prepared. Wait, I got an iPad. That's what I'm saying. Oh, the iPad died. Did it? Yeah, oh, no, it didn't. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. <laughs> all right. We're going to have to edit this part out. Um, But in the meantime, mm-hmm. um, let's talk about what you have planned for this year. Are you like a new year, new me type of <laughs> person are you just a go with the flow type of person uh i wouldn't say new year new me but you definitely gotta upgrade and switch up the way you was doing shit from the year before mm-hmm. but my plan so far for this year is um heavy content okay i keep pushing this project you feel me it's mm-hmm. a real good project i just gotta get the people to to hear that shit okay um anything outside of music that you looking because you said content is it Music related all, all content. All of that is music. If it's not music, it's for the clothes. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Me okay. personally, that that's that's me personally. <laughs> what you was about to say? Me per- it sounded like there was more to go along with nah, that. Nah, I, I, no. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'm still. I didn't forget about your freestyle. I'm over here looking at um. Tight. Nah, beat gotta be hard though. Damn. You <laughs> see, now this is just too much pressure because now I gotta go and see if the beat is nice. This is it. Now this cool. How, how I'm sounding? We good? Yeah. Hey. Chat. Hey. Yeah, we going off the top again, you feel me? Shout out Talk of the Town. Yeah. Hey. Look, they was doubting on me and that's real. They don't really know how I feel. I was really like deep in that field. Really ducking from ops on the court. I was just hearing niggas they talking. But they knowin' we both for the sport. I was hearing them niggas they talk. They was never outside when it's dark. I was trying to put niggas on game. They was really just looking for fame. Mm-hmm. I was telling that shorty the moment I make it, she never look at me the same. And now she gon' look at me like, 
Jav, you done switched up But a nigga done came up Like I'm walking around And I got big bucks like And I tell that bitch like And she got a boss up And go never new life I be switching on a new wife And I'm fucking on the shorty And she knowing that she do right And I tell him when she do bad and I tell them what they do like I ain't even tripping over the limelight. like I be all in the spot when the time right Ay. And I tell them like look out Ay. You're my brody he the lookout If we ever do a lick then you know it nah, 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 nah. Alright <laughs> <Ay, ay. laughs> Nah but you did that though You did let me Cause a lot of niggas can't do that, 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 you... that, that, that beat could have been a little better though Alright don't was, start coming for her. Don't start coming for my beat Cause you was nah, like this beat I type of right, little... Let me, let me Listen, get one more beat that, that was my first that was the first one that I pulled up. I, I just know, picked son. like I, I just picked I mean, the random one. But I think that you did good for being first of all, you did good. But like for being put on the spot like that with a beat that you didn't hear before. <laughs> nah, I think I think that was good. So um okay, so is there anything else that you feel like, you know, we should get into before we wrap this up? Any specific things that um you feel like we should look out for? I know you said content, pushing the project, um, Anything else that you want to touch on? Uh, yeah, you feel me? Shout out the brand. You feel me? Go look up the website, Sabotage BK. We're going to have a whole bunch of new clothing for the new seasons, a lot of new music. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned for all that. Got a new music video on the way for Can't Let It Slide. Okay. That was the intro for the tape. A lot, of, a lot of shit in the works right now. You know what I meant to ask you, too? Like, What's Are that? there any New York artists that you would like to work with? I know what you said about collabs mm. already, but New like New York artists. That's yeah. a good question. Um Damn. I, I shit. <laughs> I don't really listen to a lot of New York people, so this is a crazy Nah, I feel like I would fuck with I fuck with like a Dave East, you feel me? I feel like that would be a good feature. Mm -hmm. I feel like I really fuck with Jim Jones, you feel me? I grew up on Dipset Heavy. <laughs> I feel like some shit like that would go crazy. That has the Jim Jones feature. I fuck with that. Okay, and then what about outside of New York? Who would you like to work with outside of New York? Outside of New York, G Herbo got to give me a feature, you feel me? I feel like I'll kill that shit. Mm -hmm. the, that was actually a G Herbo type beat. beat. Word? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm tripping now. The beat was all right. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? But, but I just, you feel me? It wasn't really my steez. Please. Okay. <laughs> all right, so G Herbo, that's it? Uh, That's like nah, the not really. Um, I work with. I feel like I would. I, I really fuck with Raw Wave for like his pain type shit. Mm -hmm. I feel like that type of feature would hit. Mm -hmm. I fuck with Adele. Adele wow, you're crazy. the second person I said that. Albi Al said that, and you know what's funny? Because when you were talking about people that you would work with, Albi Al popped in my mind, and then he, but he also said that he Adele? would, he, yeah, he nah, called, he crazy. called himself something like the rap Adele or something like what? that, the hood Adele, something he said like that. But yeah, nah, Adele go crazy. I'll Adele definitely Adele. does go crazy. Um, now when it comes to collabs, though, do you look for people, or would you be looking for people who? Your answer kind of already answers this question. Mm -hmm. People who compliment your sound versus people who sound similar to you. Obviously, Adele does not sound like you. So, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> when you um, are looking for a collab, it's more so geared toward who you think would compliment your sound. Semi, but I feel like also you want to you wanna get in different lanes sometimes. You feel me? Like the reason I say Adele, because that's like, that's a global lane. You feel me? So yeah. it's, like, it's going to sound different than the shit I make, but. It's going to hit. Yeah. We love it, though. Right. Okay. Well, thank you for stopping by. I feel like Appreciate this was a great it. conversation. Right. Um, Make Yo, sure you shout out your... have some better beats. You whoa, feel whoa, me? I'm whoa, whoa. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> we don't usually have style. people do freestyles on here. Word? No, this was like, I really just like threw you into the fire just now. Nah, that's how y'all know I'm nice. She not I really did. y'all niggas to spit. <laughs> 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 I really did. Like, I, we don't usually do that, so don't come for my beat, okay? <laughs> I had little time to prepare. Um, But yeah, shout out your socials so that everybody knows where to find you. Yo, um, Jive on Instagram, J-A, two Vs, two underscores. Follow me on Twitter, too, Moneybag Jive. The YouTube is Sabotage, you feel me? Sabotage.bk. The website, Sabotage.bk. And yeah, shout out Talk of the Town, too, you feel me? I fuck with y'all. Yes, shout out to you. We fuck with you, too. Thank you again for coming.